there's no bumps or dents in the bottom. You'll also need some fine sandpaper, a utility knife blade, a thumbtack, a coat hanger, some fiberglass, and a bottle of heat. Use the sandpaper to remove the paint off the bottom couple of inches of both cans. Open the first can and pour out the contents. Using a book to hold the utility blade, carefully cut off the bottom inch of the first can, and then use the sandpaper to smooth out the sharp edge. Use the second can to stretch out the lip of the bottom half of your stove. Now just add some fiberglass and your bottom half is done. Make the top of your stove the exact same way. Before assembling the two pieces, you'll need to use the thumbtack to create a fill hole in the top half. Now comes the tricky part. Carefully place the top half inside the bottom as level as possible so the edges don't catch. Use a shim from the leftover piece of can if you're having problems getting it to fit. Once you have it lined up, squeeze it together as tightly as you can get it. Finally, use the thumbtack to create the fuel jets. Create a bunch of them evenly spaced around the top of your stove. If you don't already have a pot stand, you can quickly make one with a wire hanger. Just be sure to sand off the outer coating first. Now it's time to test it out. Slowly pour the heat into the stove, giving it time to drain through the fill hole. It doesn't take very much. A few tablespoons is enough to boil a pot of water. This type of can stove must be preheated for a second before the vapor pressure will sustain the jets. Once it's lit, put the pot stand over it and then you're ready to cook. So whether you're camping or just forgot to pay the electric bill, now you can make a tiny stove even MacGyver would be proud of.